when I was young and I'd go someplace and they'd say, do you want a beer? I mean, I don't, I don't like beer, but the truth is I didn't like that style of beer. What I needed to find was something that I like and people can do that now. There are three of us who own the brewery, Matt, Taylor, and myself, and the three of us are full-time firefighters. We opened in January of 2014. We were number eight. We were the eighth operating brewery to open up. Since then have expanded our everything, our, our production, our location, our distribution. So it's really just been off to the races. Well, it was my partner Mike's idea. I was always homebrewing at the time too, so I think that's always a pipe dream to, uh, you know, like, oh, maybe we can brew beer for a living. And I was like, yeah, yeah, whatever. And then he went and raised a bunch of money on Kickstarter and <laughs> really, really made it happen. It's going really well. The uh, tap room supports itself. Uh, we have six employees, which is a pretty good uh, feeling to have. We really like our hoppy beers. We have a lot of saisons on tap. I got a finance degree and Lynette got a marketing degree. And there was zero jobs available. It wasn't even it. <laughs> Unpaid was, internships. Yeah. It was no internships, nothing. So yeah. it, it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful thing though that we didn't want this job. People ask us like, are you going to ship your beer like to New Mexico or out of state? And we're like, well, we'd like to ship our beer to like the east side. <laughs> we're so busy, yeah. well balanced, hot forward IPAs is kind of kind of what we love to make. Seven barrel system, so 31 gallons in a barrel. Our capacity was we could do about eight batches a month, which is about 50 barrels. Added some new tanks, we can do about 100 barrels a month now. Right now we're only capable of brewing four kegs at a time, basically. Our most popular beers are pretty, you know, get drank up pretty fast. We still have the original system that we bought, which is a one and a half barrel system. We've modified it to crank out up to nine barrels a day, which is quite a bit. We do that between three and five days a week, depending on you know where we're at and our levels. I think about the brewing process all day, every day. As we like to say, grain to glass. Start out with our malt that, that we get in big pallets. We also have Sonoran white wheat. So it's an organic heirloom Sonoran white wheat, which is incredible that, that we get to use it. So we get the grain in, so this is our mill. It's very, it's very loud, very scary. Um, but we mill about four, four to five hundred pounds of grain per batch. Bags go into the mash tun. It's a big vat of, of oatmeal, which is grain, cracked grain, um, mixed in uh, with water. And all we're trying to do is turn complex carbohydrates into simple sugars, so yeast can eat them. You get all the sugars off of it. That's the whole goal: is to get all the sugars off of it and then you boil those sugars. That purifies it, sterilizes it. You add the hops in there and that'll actually, it's called isomerizing, but it'll take the acids and it'll change their chemical structure so that it tastes bitter, like how you taste bitter beer, like an IPA. This is gonna be a Saison style beer. To kind of spice things up with this one a little bit, we used uh, American hops in the end of the boil, so we used Centennial and uh, Eureka. Just to add a little more aromatic, some nice floral uh, notes. We just whirlpooled and now we're letting all the uh, sediment fall out. And we're just waiting on uh, our timer to go off, which is about to go off in 45 seconds. So it's about a 10 hour brew day from milling to mash to kettle. And then we have to quickly cool if you want to look down here. So this heat exchanger. At the same time, the hot wort is being pumped through the opposite side of the heat exchanger and it's crossing through little plates and uh, it's being pushed into the uh, fermenter. And it'll immediately take it down to like 65 degrees. And then we go through the, quite the process of pitching the yeast. The yeast, we can pitch yeast to it and it'll make beer. Once it's cooled and oxygenated, we add the yeast. Like a two week fermentation time, that's what takes the sweet <laughs> tea and turns it into like a fermented beverage. Depending on the style, depending on the yeast is about five to seven days. Um, then it rests for another, probably seven days, and then goes over here to the bright tank. Then you carbonate it, you keg it, and you drink it. So it's always fun, you know, if you adjust this a tiny bit, or if you add, you know, more of this or that, um, you end up with a completely different thing. A really easy way to screw up is if you're not clean or you're not sanitizing everything, and there's a difference between, like, cleaning something and sanitizing it, so you have to do both. We do a lot of cleaning and a lot of sanitizing. And while this is going on, we're cleaning everything. 90% of brewing is probably cleaning. 
The biggest challenges that we face is keeping up with demand, first of all, and second, just the space that we have. There's just not enough time and, and, and to make all the beer that people want to drink. We'll grow as fast as we can come up with ideas to get our beer to the customer as fresh as we do right now. There's a lot of thirsty people in Tucson. I love beer. <laughs> I love beer. It's tight. It's really fun. It's like, I don't call it a job. Tucson is uh, growing in, in the beer world, so we're glad to be a part of it.